Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Bootstrap 5 full tutorial series. Today's episode, we are going to learn and implement Bootstrap dropdowns. You would have seen dropdowns whenever we give user a choice to select from more than one options, right? It can be as, as simple as gender. You can give a dropdown to select the gender which includes male, female or do not want to disclose or it can go to a complex ones which are chained uh, um, select drop downs like for example first you select the country it would load the select drop down for the states then you select a state and then the consequently the cities and the district can load right so this is a chained drop down much complex scenario so those are the some of the real time use cases where you would have already used and seen drop downs today we will learn all about it using bootstrap component drop down this is part 21 of Bootstrap 5 full tutorial series. I have planned around 40 tutorials for you. So if you have any doubts, any queries on these tutorials, please do let me know in the comment section. I will try and help you as much as I can. All right, so so far we have covered all these topics that are on your screen right now. We are on the 21st uh, tutorial and today we are focusing on learning drop downs um, and then we'll probably be doing few live projects again in the coming upcoming tutorials all right so drop downs let's talk about that so some of the uh, utility classes that drop uh, bootstrap provides for drop down are the main outer div which is class equal to drop down that's the main div which tells that this particular component is a drop down and then obviously we need a button right where when we click on it it would open up the options right that usually would be a button it can be anything you can give it a link but the important thing here is that the class has to be drop down toggle and the id has to be same matching with the id of the ul that is the list unordered list that you give and the unordered list um, is nothing but it's a drop down menu right it's a menu option which will have items in it like drop down hyphen item one two and three this is the common structure to all the drop downs that you would use in bootstrap the data gets uh, it gets interesting when you have dynamic data connected to it right so let's do some hands on and go and see some examples and learn more all right so i'm opening this application and so far if you see my application looks like this we have done some live project we in the last episode we added model window we added learn to add form so today let's add a drop down somewhere here right and instead of this button group now i want to make it a drop down right so let's go and pick up that code from bootstrap documentation as always i will encourage you to always start with scaffolding with some basic code that you get do not try and code everything because you may end up making some mistake which will lead to major problems and frustration if you are a new beginner this is the best way to approach because this will help you to learn better without mistakes all right so copy that um, component code basic code that's available in bootstrap now you see there is a class equal to drop down you have a ul li list and you have a drop down button let's save it and run and see the output so you see we have this drop down here right so now what i'm going to do i'm going to remove or rather comment it out here and now we'll so now we see we have add new contact we have drop down so what i'm going to do is make it little interesting i'll say actions right so here i'll say pdf download say print records right or i can say delete records right so see now we have a tabular option you can choose bulk actions right so you can call them as bulk actions so now what we can also do interestingly is we can add instead of this i'm going to add one more and I'm going to remove this this is where things get interesting in your data table right so what I'm going to do here is add a checkbox type equal to checkbox 
So I'm trying to simulate a real time use case like how you would usually see in most applications. So just copy it. Right. And OK, so now see. So now when you have a lot of data, right. So we can also have this at the top here. Put type equal to check box. OK. So now user can click on these and select all or unselect and those operations right in your data table that we will do. Now you can select let's say two and say bulk action right print delete or PDF right. So this is one example of drop down that you can use. Now you can also have chain drop downs right. For example uh, these are colored again so you can just give a color to it um, right. So you can just say BTN danger BTN so if you see um, the warning color right so you can that's the button basically it's nothing fancy just a button all right now once you have it so you can also give the size of it right so we can say button large button medium all that so let me show you that so we have button right so this is all the same things that we have seen whatever classes apply to button the same thing can be applied for this particular button right so I'm not going to cover button here because we have already covered it Rather, let me show you some interesting use cases. Now, this is used in your navbar. You see here. So, let's take that code and put it as a link, right? So, let's do that. So, let's take this code and put it in the right here, right? Now, this is a toggle button. So, or we can also take a link which is ULLI, right? So just copy this. Uh, I'm going to just copy the li code, which is, we will put it in our list in the top here. Right. So we have pricing home disabled. So there I'm putting. Um, so I think there is an extra li. Okay. So we got it. Now let's go and refresh. So now you see we have a drop down at the navbar. Right. Now. This is how we can add a simple drop down to our navbar if you want to add. So we added it in the container. Now we added one in the navbar. Right. Uh, other interesting thing is you can see here. So this is on your right side. Right. So now the drop down is coming on the right. So instead of drop down, you can say drop right. It would come on the right. Okay. So that's another cool thing that you can implement again. Like you have drop right, you can have drop left. Again, this is totally user experience that you want to continue using in your application, right? Uh, that being said, um, let me show you some which would have the context. Like you can have a divider between the menus, right? Um, these are simple cool th stuff that you would, once you start using, you can always incorporate them. Uh, you have the list LIHR. So now you would see, so there is a line here that you see can see here there's a it's a gray color line so you're not seeing but um, it's there <laughs> all right uh, so you are using it in as states right now let me sh use it as a form right so to do that um, let's quickly pick up some state <coughs> and go and put it there so let's copy this as it is right and we will put it in the form also. So this is another uh, set of where you are using it in a form. Uh, so you can see. OK. All right. So uh, we'll cover that again when we start actually putting together in a live application. I'll show you how you can add that in the drop down. Uh, but for now, think of it that as a select uh, drop down item. Right. That's what you can use it uh, as an option. Right. All right. Cool. So that's about drop downs that we have seen today. Um, just we'll, we'll put them into action once we start live project using these and try putting a proper screen so you learn more about it in the forms and everywhere. All right. OK, so before I leave you, uh, let me show you one last thing, which is uh, so you can also use this. Uh, I told you we can use it in a form, right? So it's not like we cannot use the regular select drop down. We can still use that, right? So. <coughs> So see, I'm going to give a um, say option 
se dia right so these are list of countries right so if you see this um, we can still do that so it's not a problem so here you can see it's not coming like this like the form so what I'm going to do now is let's make it class form control right so now you see this is coming up like a drop down right if you want to use this which is the default uh, select op uh, option drop down which is of regular HTML but um, alternatively you can also use um, the drop down that's like this right so either way it's fine it depends upon your um, application usage but go ahead give it a try and do it as you prefer in your application let me know if you have any doubts I'll be happy to help you in the next episode I'll cover bootstrap popover Thank you so much for joining. If you have any doubts, drop them in the comments. If you have any feedback, do drop them. Do like, share, li subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.